Um, I'm supposed to do a roll call. And during this roll call, everybody's supposed to say present and then what city they're in. So um, I'll start with uh, the person to my right, which is Laura Bonnell. Present to Royal Oak. Jody Ellison. Present, Royal Oak. Denise Reski. Present, Royal Oak. Patricia Peruk. Are you present, Patricia? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, Royal Oak. Awesome. And Melissa. I can't hear Melissa for some reason. No worries. Really? Now we can. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> um. <laughs> Love it. Um, cool. So we handled our roll call. Moving on. Uh, next thing, public comment. We have one attendee. Chris. Welcome, Chris. How do we handle public comment there, um, Carol? No recommendation? Carol's on mute. Yeah. Usually Carol lets them in. I see one attendee. So we have we have someone named Chris Lange with us. Yeah. Welcome, Chris. He, he has his hand up. He's one of the um, people with uh, 803, one of the developers with 803. So I don't know if he has his hand up. I don't know if he wants to just do a public comment or if you want him to comment when we get to item seven. I can give him permission to talk right now so you guys can. Um, yeah, we'll figure it out with him. Yeah, we'll say hi to Chris. Hey, Chris. Here we go. Welcome, Chris. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can. Yes. Yeah, thank you. I don't. Are we an item on the agenda? I'm sorry, I don't know. You are. You're item number seven. Um, so we just have a couple of bits of uh, housekeeping to do, and you're the first uh, sort of order of business. So uh, welcome and stick around. So, thank you. I can wait till I'm I, item number seven. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. Um, so, uh, seeing no other attendees, I'll move us along on our agenda. Um, closing public comment. Um, so, first I need to approve our agenda. Carol, can you share the agenda just so that we can approve it? Um, uh, everybody yeah. sees it. Um, just the second page, not that first COVID page. Okay. Look at this, we're all virtual tonight. <laughs> I feel like I've been doing this all day. Oh, right, I have. <laughs> Here we are. Boom. Here's our agenda. Um, a lot of those are going to have zero updates. Um, anybody have anything they'd like to add or subtract? Nope. No. Hearing none. I will move. I would oh, wait, wait, sorry, oh, sorry. Hold on. Can you add um, share the warmth? Yes. Mm. All right, please. It is uh, on under your subcommittee report. Oh, it Thank is. You. There it is. Beautiful. Sorry. Thank you. We, we will get to that. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I would ex look for a motion if them, somebody has one to approve that. It, is that the type of thing you're keeping? Do we have anybody keeping track of those things tonight? I'm writing it down. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so Pat moved support. I support it. Beautiful. Laura, support. No discussion. All in favor of moving our agenda, approving our agenda. I have to do a roll call. So hold yeah. on. Back to our roll call again. Laura. Do I just say approved Royal Oak again? I don't know. I don't know if we have to say the Royal Oak. Okay. Just would you like approved. to move that? Approved. Yes. Jody. Yes. Approved. Denise. Yes. Approved. Pat. Yeah. Melissa. There we go. So that's moved along. That's our agenda. Boom. Done. Now we have to approve our minutes from February 17th, which were not included in the packet. So I don't know if we can actually approve those yet, having not seen them. Um, you could table them. Let's table those those until the next month. Do we need to vote to table them? Yes. All right. I would accept a motion to table those minutes. Uh, I'll make a motion. This is Jody. Jody? Is there support table for Jody's motion? We'll call Melissa the support for that one. 
in a roll call again. Laura. Yes. Yes. Jody. Yes. Denise. Yes. Pat. Yeah. Melissa. Boom. Tabled. <laughs> Look at that. We're up to financial update. What is our financial update? Does anybody have a financial update? Uh, I feel like we should have a financial update. Pat, you had gotten some information from the city clerk um, or the city um, financial people. Sure, I can share it here. It pertains more to the mural, but I can certainly share the financial aspect of it now. Awesome. Okay. Um, well, this all started because uh, the mural, um, the story mural is complete. It's ready to be installed in City Hall. It's, you've probably all seen pictures of it. It's gorgeous. The ceramic work is all done. Um, but it's not like a picture that you can just slap up on the wall with a picture hook. You have to actually install it. Um, someone, one individual is making the frame for it and the other individual will actually install it. And I don't know that I understand the process completely, whether it's piece by piece um, or whether there's sections of it that can go up, but then it has to be grouted. And there is a specialist who does that kind of work. And it's appropriate to have those people do that kind of work to get it installed correctly. And the cost to install is about $6,000 when you um, put in the labor aspect and the cost of the frame and so on and so forth. Also, um, both of the laureates suggested that because its location, which is going to be in a first floor hallway of this new city hall, um, it's, a little, um, it's a little dimmer, it's not close to some windows, it's kind of more interior, and they thought that it might be appropriate to have some additional lighting just on the mural itself. And so, of course, that's an additional cost. Um, the city examined the whole building budget process and made the decision uh, that this is a component of the, of the budget. So there were some for the, bug, for the building itself. So there were all kinds of discussions about, oh my gosh, where are we going to get $6,000 to installation plus more lighting? Judy Davids and I had a lot of conversations about, you know, fundraisers and, and donations and you know, can we go to the, some of the big players in town and just say, can you help us out? That kind of thing. Um, but then um, I realized that as an arts commission, number one, this is our project. And number two, we haven't done anything else this year. We haven't done any other programs. So I wondered, you know, how, what kind of a budget do we have? Did the city commission give us any kind of budget? And, and what is it? Because during the course of a normal year, we do have some expenses. And we raised some money, but we also had some expenses. So I contacted Julie, um, who is our finance director, and I said, Julie, is there anything there at all? And she said, yeah, James Kreisen, before he left, when we were doing the budget process, preparation process last spring, he gave you guys a budget request of $37,500. And it was approved by the city commission in the budget. So, and she said, you haven't spent a penny. So you have $37,500 in your budget this year, which is more than enough to do the mural installation. But one thing that Judy, or that Julie did say is that that's budgeted money. You have to spend it by June 30th of this year or it goes away, it doesn't roll over. So not only do we have the money that is sufficient to install the mural and get it lit appropriately, but we also have an additional chunk of money to spend on other projects if we want to, um, or else the money's gonna disappear by the end of the year. And we can do that just by authorizing various projects and Julie will just pull it out of our budget. She also told me, and I don't, I don't think I forgot to mention this to you, Jason, is that we have in the fund balance, the, the city fund balance, which is like the savings account, we have a of $37,000 there as well. We could also dip into that if we wanted to or if we had to, um, but that would need city commission approval. That would take a budget amendment to pull it out of fund balance and give it to us as spending money. So that's there also. Um, Julie's, Julie's not recommending that we drain that because that will carry over to the next year as a fund balance, assuming that the city 
is financially healthy and we don't need to dip into the fund balance for savings for whatever reasons. And so far, knock on wood, it looks okay. Um, so, so anyway, um, that's kind of our financial situation, which will give us some opportunities perhaps to um, explore um, some projects, you know, maybe putting a down payment on a piece of art for the sculpture park. I, I don't know. Um, this probably deserves some serious brainstorming. Um, but that's uh -huh. a special situation, and that's a heck of a lot better than doing t shirt fundraisers for mural installations. So, anyway, that, that's kind of where we are financial wise. I love it. Thank yeah. you, Pat. Um, um, and as I think about it, I was thinking, is that money from the DDA that we would? would have been coming our way, but that might even be completely different money that we would have gotten from the DDA for the summer concerts. And you mentioned the pianos and stuff like that. Those, that was always from a DDA bucket too. So oh, okay. um, we might, well, we haven't even explored that with them. And I just got off a call with them and uh, the consumers marketing committee that usually gives us that money. And I hate going to that call. So um, it's very interesting. Um, um, so I'm not even going to approach that topic until the spring probably, but um um, so thank you for that update. Um, and to give you guys an update, just from, from that, that perspective too, um, we um, have the wonderful assistance of Carol here on the call with us. Um, but City Hall staff is very, very uh, slammed with a lot of things right now. So um, um, I finally got to meet Paul, our new city manager for the first time this afternoon for our 29 minutes this afternoon, because <laughs> um, um, we're all very busy. and. Um, got to introduce him to a little bit of the history of, of what we're doing and how we do it. Um, um, I saw sort of a deer in the headlights look in his eyes because he doesn't have a James Krizan, um to handle, um, handle us per se. Um, he wanted to sort of uh, tame our expectations in terms of what, what, what we could get assistance from, um, from the staff. Um, so I wanted to convey that to everybody on our call with us today um, that um, uh, we have limited capacity to, to accomplish some things, um, but there are some things we need to accomplish and those are, are gonna be talked about here in a minute um, uh, on this call tonight. And then um, the idea of brainstorming some things in the future, we can get to a little bit of that here at the end, but I don't wanna keep people too late tonight. So, um, 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 so I'll keep us moving. So uh, we have some money, um, we can do some things and we have some things we need to deal with. So with that, we will um, welcome our, our friend uh, Chris here. Um, and talk about uh, number seven, approval of art for 803 North Main Street. Welcome, Chris. We might have lost him. Oh. Nope, there he is. I'm here, thank you. Uh, you can you see Chris Brokovich on the line as well? He's the developer of the project. I don't see him, I only see your um, I only see you as an attendee on this call, so. Um, awesome, so I'm left to do his bidding, but that's fine. No, that's okay. That's fine. Um, so we did get approval for the project at 803 Main, um, I think a month ago. And um, part of that approval was to place art around our building or somewhere in front of our building. So this all happened, I think, when I say happened, it, um, it was actually two weeks ago. So it was put in our wheelhouse to, not wheelhouse, but put in our, 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 put upon us to place art in front of our building. And Joseph Mercy, uh, Murphy and Doug Hedges um, sent us or me a um, email which had a, an art object, which he suggested would could be used in front of our building. And I did take a look at it and it's like actually awesome, by the way. Yeah, that's it. It's actually awesome. I put this in my house. So um, I did place it on our building, which I probably can't and won't spend the time try to get to the point that I could show you, but I have it Photoshopped on our building. Um, love the art. And now all I'm asking of you guys is what do we do from here? What are our obligations for the lighting of it, the maintenance of it and longevity of it? So I'm looking more for how do we accommodate this work of art? Um, 
Uh, the short answer is we don't know. Uh, no, that's probably awesome. a, a pretty accurate short answer. But um, I think the first order of business is is to is to sort of get some idea from the the committee here. So this is a piece of artwork from a project in 2017 that the artist never picked up. Um, that is a, a effectively abandoned with the city and sitting in a city office that nobody's using. So um, that part's wonderful. Um, we have this piece of artwork that could be uh, bestowed upon a building and um, used in the community. So first we have to determine how do we want to do that? Do we want to retain the ownership of that artwork and loan it to the, to the, to the development um, for the future? Or do we gift it to them? And if, or do we sell it for the artist to them? Like those, those are the kinds of questions. So um, Pat. Could I ask, um, what it is made of? Is it a painting? Is it, what is it on? Um, how durable is it? Can I just, and how big it is? Pat, do you, or no, sorry. Uh, uh, Carol, do you know any of those details? It is um, on die bond, die and it is 114 inches wide by 48 inches high. So it's a fairly large piece. Um, so four by almost 10. Yeah, I couldn't find the location when it was part of the Art Explored. I was trying to research and find out where it had been displayed, but it has been in the city manager's office for three years now. And while I enjoyed immensely, it would be much better if the public were enjoying it. Yeah, it, it was um, the email I got from uh, Joe Mur Murphy was that it was on 11 miles somewhere. Gotcha. I'm just trying to see if I had anything that might've had that in it from the past here, but I probably don't. Um, I mean, it's a very nice piece and we would be, you know, honored to have it actually. Um, so anybody have any thoughts as to what would be the best? Um, I think it was on the hotel on 11 mile. Um, Probably. So anybody have any thoughts as to what the best way to go about this might be? Oh, I'll just chime in as I always do. Um, I, love the idea that it's going to get displayed. Um, my thought would be that at least starting out, we loan it if they're willing to display it. Um, I'm guessing at this point, like we, like we've discussed, the artist has abandoned it, but um, it may be something, it may be such a thing that in a year or two, they may change their aesthetic or the color. It may not work for them. And then no loss, no foul. We could reclaim it to put somewhere else and they could do, something in its place so my feeling is right away at least maybe we loan it obviously free of charge and just thank them thank you chris for giving us a place to display this piece where it's been sitting in an office but that's that's where i'm starting from what are your thoughts on that chris um it's all good stuff the um just to let you guys know the building is about at that point, which is the midpoint of the building, because the property line is on a skew, the building is not quite square to, well, it is square to the property line, but the, the, the right away is a skew to the building. There's about five feet there, and I was hoping to get like a little foreground for the, for the artwork so I could have like grasses in front of it to give it a little foreground. I would like to have a little bit of distance off the building just because I need the ventilation for the parking area that is behind the artwork. Um, and we, we speaking for the developer, do like the idea, actually. Um, I'm not sure how to mount it yet, though I have a pretty good idea how to do that. Um, I want to light it. And having it on loan is like, obviously perfect for us as a develop the developer perfect, obviously. And then changing it out in the future is fine too. Um, I guess we're, uh, I am at least, and I'm sure the develop, developer will be as well, pretty much okay with what you guys are discussing. It's, so, it's, a, nice, it's, a, nice, it's a nice work of art. 
Yeah, and just and, to clarify what I was saying too, Chris, um, my my initial thought is not that we'd want to yoink it in a couple of years, but mm -hmm. in case you guys changed your opinion on what you wanted there, mm -hmm. then it would have an opportunity to continue to live on somewhere else or as part of our larger rotating catalog. Yeah, I got it. It's on loan. Yeah. And then th the other part is that you're creating a space for artwork that isn't locked into one thing. Right. It could, right. It could potentially be a wonderful, you know, place to put artwork for a long time in the future and, and be a part of a rotate rotating type of thing or something, you know, maybe, maybe, um, does that, does that present any challenges in terms of you guys in developing that property there? Not, or no? not at all. Not at all. It would be actually awesome for us. Beautiful. Um, um, and part of the issue with art in our community to begin with and why these types of things come in front of us is the city commission had carved out an exemption from the sign ordinance years ago um, to allow for us to, to, to deem things art instead of a sign. So mm -hmm. um, whereas a lot of business owners would, would love to just put signs all over town, all over every building like they did right. back in the 20, 20s and 30s or whatever. Um, 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 it just uh, helps us be able to do creative things that aren't, that aren't, automatically denied because they're signs. So um, mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, I think this might be a, a great, a great way to get some artwork out of Carol's office and a great way to um, help you guys have some artwork. And then uh, you guys are developing property and making our community a better place. So We're, um, we, we are all in. Wonderful. What do we need to execute on this call? Yes, Pat. Um, I would recommend that we uh, approve a motion recommending to the city commission that the city loan this work of art to the developer for the building because the actual loan uh, lease document will have to be put into the form of a document and it would have to be approved by the city commission because it is city property and we are in between city, well we're not in between city attorneys but Dave Gillum has just left uh, two days ago was his last day and Carol Rosati, who's going to be interim uh, until we actually hire someone at, in a couple of months, will be doing um, whatever needs to be done city attorney-wise. But somebody's going to have to actually draft a, a lease agreement for this um, in the city attorney's office. But I think if we start the process by recommending tonight to the city commission to, um, to recommend that this piece of art be loaned to the developer, that will start the process. And the city attorney's office can start drafting the document and then it will come before the city commission and get formally approved. So that's the process I would recommend. Thank awesome. you. Any other thoughts on that? I think mm. Jody's recommendation is great because Chris loves it. And yeah, I think that's great. Beautiful. So I would entertain that motion. Would you call that a motion, Pat? Yeah. So Pat, put a motion on the table. Is there support for Pat's motion? I'll support. Denise supports. I'll uh, do our roll call. Laura. Yes. Jody. Yes. Denise. Yes. Pat. Yeah. Melissa. Look at that. There's a yes. Boom. Unanimous. Look at this government at work. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you guys are awesome. Thank you very much. Thank no, you. Chris, you guys are awesome for putting our work in the community. We can't thank you enough for, for, I mean, I know the developer has to commit, commit time and resources and the money to do something like this. And, and I know it can feel like un, unnecessary bureaucracy in some, in some yeah, people's minds. But it is an enhancement and it, you know, it's a good thing. So, we um, appreciate so we, it. I appreciate um, it. We appreciate you guys doing that. So um, thank you for being a part of this call um, and being a part of this meeting with us. And um, the next step will be the city commission uh, taking this up at their next meeting or whenever they would get that on there. So um, um, I would, I think you've probably been following up with Judy or Carol here. So hopefully um, you can remain in contact with them to find out that next step. I will do so, guys. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Take care guys. Bye. I'll make a note to include it when they do the second reading on that on the city commission. Beautiful. Okay. Look at that. We just made some artwork happen in our community. <laughs> How awesome is that? It's a good Monday. <laughs> it's better than the last nine, 10 months. Is it, oh. <laughs> it is about time. Uh, cool. All right. So uh, moving on. Uh, let me look my agenda here. Um.
Next thing is Artist Laureate. So um, Pat gave us sort of the update on the Artist Laureate project before um, in that we need to uh, get some funding to go to that world in order to finish that project from, so technically our Artist Laureates we have right now were selected in 2019. We have not selected one for 2020. So we still have that sort of $5,000 that we could allocate. And the fact that we had picked two artists in 2019 to be our Artist Laureate to begin with might, um, might help that situation uh, a little bit. So um, I guess the question becomes, does the money go directly to them that we need to finish the installation or do we, are we approving money for the city to shuffle under its own umbrella? Can I, I believe that they have been paid a portion of the $5,000. I think it's either they have already received $2,000 and there's then they still are owed $3,000 of the stipend or it's, or it's the other way around. They've, they've received 3,000 and haven't received yet the, the, the final 2,000. Um, and someone is, is putting up on my screen that they have been paid the full $5,000. That was not my understanding, but perhaps that's accurate. If that's the case, then the actual payment to the laureates is done. Um, I think at this point in time, if the, if the commission is comfortable with funding the actual installation and any additional lighting expenses, um, then perhaps we need to approve that tonight or authorize, you know, our funds to be drawn down to cover those expenses. I, I would think that that would be appropriate. Do we, uh, oh, installation cost to the city manager as $6,000. Okay, so they presented the city manager, the installation cost to the city manager as $6,000. So, so we would need to approve $6,000 to finish this project. I think that is. Just the installation. If we wanted to include any other funding for lighting, um, we could certainly do that. We could throw out a number or we could say, you know, we'll fund up to X. Mm -hmm. right. I've asked Judy a couple times to ask the laureates and the, and the electrician, um, but they haven't given us um, any estimate of a lighting cost. So we really don't know kind of what they're thinking about. And, and uh, one of the tricky things is that because the wiring is already in place in that location and there was no outlet or plug or, you know, the installation that we could tap into, uh, the electricians are going to have to kind of find how to connect it back behind the drywall and that's going to add to the expense. It's not just a lighting fixture itself. So there's some labor involved. Um, but nobody seems to know exactly what that would be and how much that would be. Well, and the other challenge with this is this is not a normal government project that can have tons of overruns, I guess, or it can't be a $40,000 lighting, lighting project, right? So, so how would we address that tonight? Uh, they have not given us a lighting cost. Okay, so um, there's, I mean, we can approve the $6,000 for the installation part of things, but I don't think we can approve the lighting until we have that number, right? Unless you wanted to just, you know, pull a number out of the air and just say, you know, we approve up to mm -hmm. 7,500 or something all and then, and then if it exceeds that, come back and get more. Yeah. Question, we, Pat, maybe you know. I, I'm sorry, Jason, I didn't mean to no, interrupt. Um, because this is a city building, and I'm assuming we'd be using the city's electricians to do this, does there have to be, does, is there any kind of an RFP process? Do we have to get quotes on the materials and stuff? Or I, I, I don't know that they necessarily have to get quotes um, on the material and what the last I talked to the last time I talked to Judy Davis she was going to talk to the city electrician who we have on staff mm -hmm. and whether or not this was something that he thought he could manage on his own or whether we were going to have to hire um, an outside electrician installer person um, and I have not heard back from her to find out what she found out from our electrician my guess is that probably because the electrician is familiar with the building and how it's constructed and where all the wires are, he would be able to do it. Um, but I don't have that uh, response firm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that, that obviously puts a potential stumbling block in our way too if we've got to go out for quotes if he can't do it. I, I don't know how they handle that. Whether yeah. they've got certain yeah. fir firms they use or, yeah. Yeah, I don't so, know how they would want to handle that. I don't know. 
do we think it's going to be more than a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars? It's hard and, for me to imagine that it would be more than that, but I but I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. And then what so, if you approve seventy five hundred and it's only sixty five hundred? Do we get the money back? I would hope so. Yeah, they'll yeah, they won't draw that much out of them. We'll just they'll just pull out and it's not gonna be six thousand dollars even. It's gonna be right. you know, five thousand nine hundred and fifty nine and twenty cents type stuff. And they'll right. just pull them out and, and then we'll have the balance left. Well, and I guess the other question is too, if it's if it's six thousand for installation, but we haven't figured lighting in there, but the arts commission covers the six thousand, might the city be convinced to come up with seven fifty or a thousand or fifteen hundred if they are if they're not looking for the whole six thousand for the for the lighting or whatever? I mean, um, I'm I'm all about you know up to a certain amount, maybe seventy five hundred that we approve, but. If we go ahead right now and say, you know, we, we approve the the six thousand for the installation, might the city find it to, to to cover some of the other costs if they're not that high? I um I'm gonna take that as a no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's fine too. That's fine too. Yeah, um, just because when Judy first presented this to the to the construction guys who were in charge of the whole building project, they were like, oh, hell no, you know, we didn't budget this, and right. we don't have this in our plans, and no, you can't put a mural up. <laughs> and so Jeez. it took some convincing and a, a fairly significant period of time for her to be able to get them on board. Now, um, people who were initially very negative about it, including people in your, the administration that you would not anticipate would be negative about this, see this as a um is something to market the new building with right real positive thing right uh, but initially uh, no so um i i i would i would strongly suggest that this commission plan on covering mm -hmm. yep so i i would say it this way i i i think if we gave them a budget of seventy five hundred dollars like mm -hmm. jody said said i would think that would be a great a great start if if there was a cost overrun i'm sure they'd come and they'd definitely come back with a bill to us but um but um i feel like you know i think i feel like six thousand dollars is an awfully round number it might be fifty two hundred dollars you know what i'm saying and uh, right. for the one the one part and honestly i thought it was forty five hundred dollars the first time somebody asked us about it so um so the fact that it's already up to six i thought maybe that already included the lighting so um and the other question is who's the actual person that's actually going to authorize what money goes out from this? Would it be you, Carol, or would it be Judy or? Well, this would be uh, approved by Paul Break. Got it. And he's got the fiduciary responsibility of the city in his best interest right. on uh, every day. So I have to imagine they would, they would do their best to, to be great stewards of our money. He actually said that to me earlier today. So, mm -hmm. um, so um, um, does, does anybody have a motion for this issue? I'll make, I'll make a motion. Can it also include then a, a plaque that lists the Arts Commission? <laughs> Sorry. Everybody in the new City Hall is getting a plaque. It's thanks to this person and that person. I think the Arts Commission should be named. What do you think? Posterity. Anyway, I'll make a motion that we approve up to up to 7,500 for installation and lighting and for finishing I like the this. plaque idea. Don't you though? I mean, posterity forever. I do. I, do. I like it. And we're we're definitely going to need a plaque to name the laureates. I mean, their name's going to have to go somewhere, and it's not in the mural itself. So we're going right. to have to name them. That's what I was going to say. You're going to want to give credit to those two ladies for all. Oh, that. absolutely. So, um, uh, so I guess what I'm hearing your motion is is that you are motioning to to for seventy five hundred dollars assuming that there's a plaque included in that $7,500. <laughs> no, I, I mean, that's kind of a, that's kind of a joke, but yes, I, I would, I think it would be awesome to acknowledge one, what's, what's a better way to get people to want to do volunteer work for the city than to see that they're recognized for doing volunteer work for the city, right? That's all awesome. No, my 7,500 was simply to do the installation and the um, uh, lighting per the, per the artist's design or However, you don't even have to put that last part on, but what it's going to cost for the installation and the and the um, lighting. Is there support for that motion? Um, and then in terms of that support by Pat 
by the way. Um, um, in terms of discussion on this issue, um, one other question for you, Carol, if you're still with us, um, is do you have any idea what a plaque costs? Uh, I, I do not, but I can't think that it would be. They're much. not very much. They're yeah. a couple hundred bucks. A couple hundred, yeah, depending on yeah. the material and what you do with it. Yeah, I can't and, think it would be more than 200 on any stretch of the imagination. Do you think all of this could happen, a plaque lighting and the mounting for $7,500? Me? Do I think? Yes. <laughs> you, see, you see every number in town. You're the, like, you have to put together every presentation for everything. Like, I, I have well, to imagine you know every number. I have seen the, I have seen the installation costs and they were, it was $6,000 even. It was 5,000 for one part and 1,000 for the other. I didn't okay. look directly at that, just at the numbers. I have seen nothing for lighting, and I, I can't think of the last time we had something where we had lighting done. Um, and we are going to be having some additional electrical work put in, and we can see how much that costs us when we have that done. That's being done by the contractors, though. It's a building issue. Um, but it could but be I, like a change change order for that for that or you know it could yeah, be. Yeah, I haven't. Project. Yeah, I haven't seen anything for. Um, I have not seen the artist laureates uh, any estimates for lighting on this project at all. So, so I, I don't know what it would be. I, I would. I feel like you can go as extreme as you want, or. <laughs> You know, simply put a track lighting in the ceiling with spotlights that shine on it. Um, I feel like a $7,500 budget might be enough to get through all of that. Um, and if not, we can always come back and do this again next month, right? Um, does that seem amenable to everybody? I see a lot of not heads nodding. So with that, if there's any not any further discussion. Um, I would only ask if Jody might want to amend her, her thing to actually include that plaque in that, in that uh, $7,500. I, I will happily include a plaque in that $7,500. So the motion on the table is to approve $7,500 to help uh, finish this artist laureate project uh, with a plaque and some lighting um, and uh, pass that off to the city commission to authorize the city manager to use those funds as best possible and keep any that they can. So there we go. Uh, all in favor, I'll do a roll call. Laura. Yes. Jody. Yes. Denise. Yes. Pat. Yeah. Beautiful. Melissa. Look at that. All in favor, woo, unanimously voted yes. So um, uh, looking online, an aluminum custom plaque runs between 40 and $120. Yes. All right. There we go. Um, um, I'm sure when City Hall orders it, it's got to be three hundred dollars. No, I'm kidding. That's a joke. That's a government government joke. Um, cool. So we just did more, more, more government. Look at that. I love it. Um, so that handles that one for uh, for tonight, I believe. And then uh, now we're going to go back to our subcommittee uh, reports. Is there any public art art explored updates? I see none. All right, moving ahead. Um, Artist Laureate program, we just did that one. So I think we're done with that one. Uh, public piano project is not doing anything this year. So we have some pianos in storage. And, um, and by the way, Pat, uh, just so you know, there was that one we generally would receive donations from. You had sent an email, something about money from the public piano thing. So that was almost always funded by donations. It was only like a thousand or two thousand, twelve hundred bucks or something like that. Just what it would end up costing maybe $1,500 at the most for paint and everything. So um, those we generally funded with donations for their names on the plaques of the pianos. And those plaques we actually got donated from ideation signs. Um, so um, um, there is no money sitting around from pianos this year just because we hadn't even got to raising that yet. So, um, um, so that was the piano update. And then uh, Denise, sharing the warmth. Yes, so it's a go for this year. I have a feeling it might be the last year because our number one knitter is moving out of town. Um, she, I mean, she, she does, Rebecca Jody is who I'm talking about. She probably does, 
75 percent of of the the items that we hang up but anyway everyone's in um she's in she's already been making a stash and she'll continue knitting until she leaves leaves the area um so we are what we what i need to do is check with the librarian and see if we can put our bin in the wooded brand and say the south entrance so that people yeah i can think drop that's what he said with the south yeah yeah so hopefully in the, we can put it in the lobby usually we have it just inside the north yeah, just inside the north entrance and people can donate there. Otherwise, I can meet up with people. It's, it's you know, we can work around it. But it's a go for this year. That's awesome. And I probably have about 10 items already left over from last year, so I can almost start hanging things now. Do we have to think about any kind of COVID communications about that project? That's, I don't know. I'm just asking it out loud to the whole committee here. What, what were you thinking, Jace? Just what, kind, I, what type of- Well, my first thought was, was perhaps Carol can connect uh, with you, Denise and Judy to communicate that, that we're gonna accept knitting donations and such just to get a little positive press about art in our community. That might be a good thing to tell people. We did something fun in our meeting tonight. Um, um, but then yeah. as I thought about that, then I'm like, oh, wait, are anybody gonna be worried about catching a virus from, from a scarf in the middle of the library or outside. Go ahead, Pat. Um, I would just run it, make sure that we run it by the staff um, because they've got um, certainly COVID um, people in various departments who are making sure that the city departments and the city buildings comply with all of the requirements that are put out by the state and by the health department. Um, I know that the library was not, is, is still not accepting book donations. And I don't know whether that's because they're afraid that the books might be contaminated or they don't have the staff and volunteers mm -hmm. on staff right now to process them or whether it's a combination of both. So before we start hanging things, I guess I would run it by Paul Break and just say, look, this is the project that we've done. This is how we do it. This is logistically how it would happen this year. Are there any problems? Um, can we do this? Do we have to change our methods a little bit? Um, so it, that's that's what I would recommend. Yeah, okay. And then what the only concern would be that multiple people might touch the stuff outside? Is that? Is I don't that think it's any. I, my only concern was just for us to talk about it. I, I don't know gotcha. if it's any different than a grocery store. Or somebody's picking up an item and putting it back on a mm -hmm. shelf. I don't think there's. I don't think there's anything to be worried about per se. Different. I mean, even being outside, it might be better with UV light and such right. to kill a virus than than a grocery store. I just wanted us to have the conversation so no, that we at least we thought about it, right? Yeah. Um, right. No, it's good. Yeah, definitely. Um, um, because it's that type of year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It yeah. Is. Um, One um, of the things that Denise and I talked about too, just briefly, was the potential of maybe adding masks this year as well, uh, um, like in a Ziploc or something. Um, um, I can tell you the light because the librarian reached out to me about that um, yeah. several months ago when she thought they were going to open, right. and I have I probably have a stash of about forty masks too. Oh, um, that in plastic bags ready to go mm -hmm. but she didn't want us to hang until the library was open because she wanted right. those to be used for uh library visitors and and i un and i understand that although the whole purpose of this was for people who may be disadvantaged who maybe don't have the the ability yeah. to source their own and so this would put them out into the community if if you know if there's somebody who's homeless or under under earning or whatever who could get a mask. So I do, un I understand both ways. Yeah. Um, I just, I don't necessarily want it to turn into, and I wonder if the people making them, potentially the people you already have, but I wonder if the people making them would want them to be, oh yeah, they're available to library patrons as opposed to they're out there for people who are in need. I, I don't know. You know, I, I question these things. Is somebody going to say, well, somebody going to the library, you know, who just forgets their mask, I'd prefer that what I made is is given as a donation to somebody who needs it, as opposed to somebody who's just, oh, 
I love the idea of the Basques outside for people who need it. That's brilliant. It's very 2020. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, in thinking of that, I don't know how we're going to police that, that aspect of it, but I like the sentiment that we, that uh, we do want to encourage somebody who's disadvantaged to pick one up and take one. Um, uh, at the same time, there's going to be people that are just going to the library and forgot their masks that are going to take one yeah. probably, right? Well, same so. as with the scarves. I mean, we couldn't stop somebody from grabbing a hat or a scarf or a pair of mittens if they just felt like it. Um, so Selling them on Etsy. <laughs> there you Exactly. Exactly. Christmas well, presents. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, well, Rebecca so, won't be here, so now what? I think the spirit, the spirit of the project is to share the warmth, and I don't think we we put any any sort of strings attached to that sharing, right? So right, right. Um, 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 in that spirit, um, I think it's great, great effort. And so, I, what was that, Pat? You could attach a mask to anybody that is hung. You know, you could put out a scarf and a mask or a hat and a mask. You could put them together like that. Right. The solution would be yes. You know, it is someone who is in need who needs this rather than just somebody who's going to zip in and get some good books. Knowing yeah, that I just, have... I just want to be respectful of what she asked of us. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Knowing and, that you know, we have... things may have changed with her too now that, I mean, we're down for basically three more weeks. So has the library reset? And, you know, they were getting closer to being able to reopen, but are we going back now to we're back to stage whichever one two you know i don't know there's all, all the city buildings are reevaluating that after, mm -hmm. what the, after what the governor said yesterday right so i don't know whether they're going to have to move back or whether they're just going to be in a holding pattern for three weeks right okay. well i mean and i know the shelter is not we're not in any position to basically because of our layout there's almost no way that we can work in that space without being on top of each other um, so you know, we are way down the, down the, uh, down the line on that, but with the library, I, I imagine they will need to reevaluate. So the, my only question for you, Denise, is knowing that we have money to spend, do you need any money for this project? Um, not really because we never took the installment down. So I haven't looked at it in a couple of months, but last time I looked at it, it was in pretty good shape. And the rings and the hanging things were all still there, so. And if you need them, I have a whole bunch of rings from when I first sourced them that you had okay. in my house and I would love to find a use for them because I'm doing nothing with them. So those are already been taken care of. Anything else about this project we need to talk about so we need to escalate this to city hall carol can you can you help brief paul on this one and just get any input he might have absolutely beautiful and then denise you could touch base with carol i think and then um and then um i would i, I think all of us are okay if 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 you had any any kind of if Judy was like, hey, this would be a great press release or something like that, I think that would be fantastic to have a great warm story to talk about us all still sharing the, the warmth during the COVID <laughs> times. Um, We're looking at um, you, Laura. <laughs> no problem. Um, cool. Uh, if we don't have any more updates on that one, I'll move us ahead um, to our performance yeah. art category, which uh, summer concert series didn't happen. And that's the end of that update. <laughs> um, um, it does say sculpture garden project. Um, um, do we have any updates on that? Uh, no, I know we've gotten an email from Rick Vian, Via, Via. Yeah, Vian, there's an N um, on the end. Um, and I remember reading that he had like $30,000 to donate or something like that towards the, the effort. Was that, am I reading that wrong? Um, I'd have to go Did back he, and reread. I don't remember. I guess the trouble with this one at the moment is we don't have enough bandwidth from a city staffing perspective to make much movement in this meeting. Would you agree with that, Pat? Yeah, and it, and it's and that's not going to end like next month. It's going to be right. 
uh, for a while. It's going to be an issue until the, the virus gets under control and we're kind of moved beyond it um, because they're really limited in terms of who they can hire, who we can hire, and, and how we can maximize the resources that we already have. So, yeah, anything major like this is, I think, unfortunately, is going to have to be put on hold for a while. No worries. So with that, I think we'll table, table the sculpture garden project for now. Um, although, well, we might talk about it again in this new business section here, but, um, yes. but uh, we'll table that one um, uh, until next month. Uh, finance and community engagement. We've addressed finance at the beginning. Community engagement wise, um, I think the biggest thing we can reach out to the world about this month would be this um, sharing the warmth project, right? So, um, um, and in the artist laureate project as well, but um, I think the sharing the warmth would be the, the biggest one. Uh, I think the artist laureate project will be best waiting until it actually gets installed and we all stand there masked up and cut some ribbon or something, um, which would be great if we did that, right? Wouldn't that be fun? Um, yeah. Um, so I think, I think we should make that happen um, when, the, when the time comes. Um, that brings us to the celebration of the arts. Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, friends. Hi, Melissa. I saw Keith. He's a human. Mr. Corn lives. <laughs> Um, we, uh, you know, we had no event sadness. Um, he and I talked about whether we thought and dreamed and hoped about this coming spring. Um, but you know, here we are schools and stuff. Um, so I'm not really sure what else to update you on unless, um, someone else has found out that indeed we are going to be able to do something at the end of May, beginning of June, 2021. I think the assumption that it's not going to happen is probably the best way <laughs> to move forward at the moment. Well, my um, mind is there, but my heart wants to be the other place. <laughs> but I did want to give you the opportunity to talk about it because we well, should. Listen, guys, nice to see your faces. Woohoo! Um, I don't think uh, um, there's any unfinished business, um, but in the, under the issue of new business, we have this, this uh, dilemma of having to spend money by June. So um, um, I had a thought today um, um, after Pat sent me that email, like, hey, we might have to spend some money. So if I'm understanding you correctly, Pat, we have about, after this last $7,500 we just approved, oh, that was 72. So we have about 60 some thousand dollars um, sitting around, not necessarily all of it we want to spend because we don't want to spend down our fund balance, but that, that would leave us with about um, 37. So $30,000 or or so that we need to deal with before the end of the, the fiscal year in June, correct? Yeah, assuming that our estimates of the installation, the lighting cost and the plaque are, are you know, ballpark are correct, then yeah, that's about, that's about how much we've got left. So I was thinking earlier today, um, there's lots of artists sitting around um, sidelined and art's not happening and, um, you know, we were, trying to brainstorm or, you know, all of us should try to brainstorm some projects that we could try to get off the ground in this time. But um, what if we were to just give it away? Yes, thank we, you. Can Micro we do grants. that? Can we, can we yes. ask for pe people to make projects happen in, in the community? And, um, and by the way, the whole community, every park, every, every neighborhood, every, every, you know, some kid wants to make a squirrel house. Sorry, I made Sammy a squirrel house and put it in front of her house. But, um, Somebody wants to make a lending library in front of their house or it's a little art, you know, library, any of those kinds of things. Maybe we just give them out in $500,000 grants yeah, or something like that. Exactly. Um, would that, like, that would include local musicians because I know they're, hurt. obviously, you know, they're hurting because yeah. I've heard from a lot of them. Okay. I mean, basically, I think what we would do is leave it kind of open ended and then, um, and then try to encourage people over this winter time to do things to, I would say, bring people together. I think has to be a big component of it. I, the, whatever they do, there has to be a, a component of community and not, not. you understand what I'm saying? Um, yeah. I don't know how I we write those. I think we should videotape it all seriously. Everybody has to do a 30 second video of their project, their singing, whatever, put it all together and then show what we did at the end. Yeah, yeah. And, and this would be a great thing, I think to bring Alicia in on too to do like student projects, kids that maybe are sitting at home who don't have the extra materials, 
let's let's identify some kids who could do with 50 bucks worth of paint, 100 bucks worth of, you know, material or something. Um, projects that you could make and then and then donate, you know, something you give away. That's yeah. So um in the only well, I, we're lucky to have Carol here with us. We don't have a city staffer at the moment. So that's the only complicated part about this. And this is the one that I, I actually briefed Paul a little bit on this idea earlier today, just because I knew I'd bring it up to you guys tonight. But, um, and then I, I knew that you guys might support it like you all have so far here. So um, the next step in that process would be for us to decide what are the categories of, of projects and how does somebody submit one and then how do we approve them um, um, and then how do we fund them and then follow up on them? You know, so it's actually probably the biggest project we will have ever under undertaken from that perspective. I mean, Art Explored is probably similar in scope, um, but this one might have many. Yes, Pat. Um, Oakland County gave out um, grants to cultural institutions um, from their COVID funds that they got from the federal government. And they had an application process. I know that the Royal Symphony Orchestra filled out an application. I don't know yet that they've announced who received the grants, um, but it was open to any cultural institution. They had to be a 501c3, but it could be an, it could be an artist organization. It could be a, a musical organization. Um, we don't want to we don't want to target 501c3s, but their template, their application process, and their criteria we might be able to use as a starting point and kind of model ours after theirs that we don't have to start from scratch. Um, if there was somebody that could take that and just put it into a form that we are all comfortable with. Um, but they, they, they do have that program out there that we could use as potentially as some kind of a model to start with. Yeah, Jody just put it up. Okay. Yeah, I, the, I mean, they have like, it's a long ass, it's like, Five page. We, theirs is a little bit more complicated because they are targeting 501c3s and they wanted to, you know, that you have to list all of those WI, you know, IRS numbers and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but but their criteria we might be able to use and tweak them so that it fits, it fits our project. So, I'm, I keep asking Carol questions because Carol's our only only person from City Hall with us, um, um, and I hope I hope you don't mind me asking you, Carol, for your input because we really do value you and your input um, on on a meeting like this. Um, what do, what do you think the chances of of getting some some support for this kind of effort uh, from the staff there? What kind of support are you asking for from the staff? Uh, in the past, something like this, James might have handled like submissions for artwork or something like that. Um, so it, maybe I'm not even asking for support just yet, but at least for you to bring this back to Paul to figure out how we might get some support to manage a project where it's basically a administration piece of this of this project and, and communication piece. I mean, Judy would love probably to have a story like this to run with about, about the um, art in the community and that would be fantastic. But then once we get people excited about it, they're gonna to wanna to submit um, proposals and then somebody just has to collect them and then get them to a meeting like this and we approve them and then um, get the people the funds and then somehow us all follow up and tell the world about it. Um, so there's a little bit of logistics in, in all of that. Um, um, so you're um, talking about administrative support paperwork yeah or, okay um well i can present that to him and see what he says and see if there's staff available to do that um, awesome you know if it's something as simple as you want somebody to submit on like a seamless docs program it's something where it can be set up and then it can actually go to one of the members of the committee so we could like set it up for you but then it would go to the committee members, you know, where you could actually go in and retrieve the data. So it could be something as simple as that, perhaps. So in that way, I mean, I don't know that we need a subcommittee for this one, because I think it would be all of us being a part of that, right? Because that seemed like we would all vote on those, right? And then... Um, 
Uh, I'm trying to think of the other process here, if, or if there is an, any more to the process. Um, and well, then, somebody would design it, then so, then we would get all the information, then we would have to vote on it, then somebody would have to be in charge of the money of who's getting what, and then who's, you know, you need yes. the support of the city, right? Sending out the checks. Yeah, and getting the paperwork to get them a check cut for their funds, or hey, you won this award, congratulations, you know, email to them from City Hall kind of thing. So um, there's a little bit of logistics involved in that. I don't know. I'm sure there's no interns at this point. I know there used yeah. to be interns. No, um, there are no interns. Could this be um, something that potentially the um, uh, the county could assist us with without necessarily laying out the guidelines, but the people that they already have on staff who deal with um, arts and culture might be able to um, do a little mentoring on this or help out with the, with the logistics where we don't have a city person who might. That I, I mean, don't know. I don't know. We all pay county taxes. So it'd be kind of cool to give them something to do. Is anybody going to see Dave Woodward at a meeting anytime soon? Some last week too late. Whoops. Dang it. Um, we can always reach out. To, I mean, Dave's very accessible. So I feel like, I feel like the number we would be looking to give away is like $25,000 or something like that, right? I'm thinking, yeah, 25 of the 30 is probably, but that's a good chunk of money for a, you know, for us to just give away to artists. That's basically our annual budget for, um, well, it's Art Explored. It's the, the concert series. So instead we're redirecting it back into the community. That's a great thing right now, I think. So in, are we safe to assume that these need to be Royal Oak artists? Um, I, personally, I think so, yes. Got it. And then, so Royal Oak artists, the art, artwork has to be community benefit type of situation in the Royal Oak proper. And then um, I don't think we put too many parameters over what it could be because I bet we get some crazy awesome submissions, right? Right. Um, right. Now, and I think I we could also have a whole media plan of you know on monday this is going to come out on our twitter royal oak twitter on you know whatever it's going to come out on facebook you're going to apply on this day and then show highlights and just get people really excited we could really build momentum this is this is the biggest news story royal oak would have for the year i think in a pandemic it'd be mm -hmm amazing it would make the national news nice i just think it's a lovely idea it is so lovely yeah. so and then i think there's different levels right there's like little kid levels of i need 50 bucks to buy some paint and then there's yeah. there's there's professionals that get a thousand bucks to put a sculpture in a park or something for six months or something you know there could be any number of 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 layers to it and i i do think saving well, we have fun balance too, so so that's good. But there's going to be some that might need a little bit of extra money because they got to mount it or something. It's going to cost a thousand bucks to put it on the side of a building or whatever. You know, there's going to be some of those kinds of things that come up. So, not spending the entire thirty that we have um, um, would be, I think, prudent in that in that way. Um, but there could be a concert that happens, you know, in the street. You know, there could be a neighborhood. Hey, Melissa has a question. Hey spend a lot of time focusing on visual arts and I know a lot of other artists in other categories are hurting and I know little kids need help with paint and distractions but there are a lot of parents of little kids that are those artists that are really hurting um, I think that as much as we engage the youth in our community so much and it's very very important I think we should be very focused on how big that little kid portion of our programming is versus how big our printed portion is versus that. And if we have $25,000 we're going to do as grants, could we take a thousand dollars to put under a PR push for it to be really serious because there's not a good story anywhere right now. And this is like the number one coolest thing in our whole entire region, not just Royal Oak, you know? So, and I'm only saying it because I'm looking down the barrel of the fact that all of my musicians that I normally hire, and some of them are here from our community, they all got fired for 
the last five shows I had booked for the last end of the year because everything's been canceled now. 100. I didn't have one yesterday. Dang it. We were supposed to play yesterday. Um, Sorry. So, no, it's not your fault. Um, I'm, anyway, needless to say, I love this idea. So let me know how I can help. So what's our next step for this idea? What do we need to do next to wrap our heads around pulling off giving away 25 grand? I think we need to write down the plan of and every step of it, you know. Um, that we can't do with all of us because then that's an. Yeah, so it's probably a subcommittee, right? Probably. Um, I put a couple of things in the chat. Just quick Google of places that are right now doing micro grants or who have recently done them and what their like uh, what their stipulations are which gives us a nice jumping off point. Do we like that? Do we not like it? Like it? Can you save those Jody somewhere so that after this meeting they don't disappear? Yeah, I'll um I I will do that. I will send an email. How's that? Beautiful. Look at that. Um so who wants to be a part of this subcommittee so that we can wrap our hands around what it is and then take it to Paul at City Hall and see how we can get them to support us. I, I, I will. will. <laughs> I will. All right. I got yeah. Jody, Laura, Melissa. Can I be a part of that or is that too big? There is no too big. This is COVID. Do what you want, dude. <laughs> no, no. I'm just COVID. saying as far as an open meetings act. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Um, oh, whatever. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd limit it to three. Three. Well, Jace, cool. if you want to do it, I'm happy to step back too. Um, no, it's totally fine. I have enough things going on in life at the moment. Um, you can never um, have enough. We can all help, even though we're not official. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So you guys are the official committee. Um, or at least do we need to vote on that? Do we need to create a subcommittee for this? I guess, I guess we probably should entertain a motion to create a subcommittee for, um, what are we going to call this? That's the other thing. What are we going to call this? The COVID micro grant program. COVID Art somewhere in there. COVID. Hold on. There's got to be an acronym that we can use. COVID. Culture. Program. Where I look. Micro grant program. COVID cultural micro grant program. C C M G P. <laughs> I don't know. That rings um, the bell. Maybe we'll work on the. <laughs> maybe we'll work on the name too. That's the first order of business, I think. Um, <laughs> the be a placeholder. So safe to assume there's $25,000 we want to give away to artists in a community of all ages doing things. And then um, um, my only, my only ask is that, that we try to get as many things to happen that bring people together as possible, yeah. whether it's a piece of artwork that is celebrated by all or, or um, an event of some sort or, you know, something, I don't know, but um, for that to be in the sort of guidelines of what we're trying to accomplish. That's, that's my only goal. Um, so I would entertain a motion to create a subcommittee to wrap our arms around this. Is there a said motion? I'll do that. Denise makes a motion to create a subcommittee for this effort, uh, supported by Pat Peruk. Uh, roll call, Laura Bono. Yes. Yes, Jody. Yes. Denise. Yes. Pat. Yeah. Melissa. There's a yes. Look at that. We just created some new business and a new initiative that's never happened before. And it's going to be amazing. How awesome has this been? Better than the last 10 months. We rock. Um, what do you say? Heck yeah. Well, there we go. That was new business. Unless there's other new business. I don't know what other business we have left, but, um, um, the only other thing we might want to think about too, we didn't establish the money part yet because we don't need to until we, until we get to this next phase. But um, I do like the idea of putting some money behind PR or something um, or to get the word out. And we might be able to get some support from other think PR efforts in, in the city hall here too, whether it's the DDA initiatives or, um, or um, Judy press releases, those kinds of things. So um, I think, I think we'll have, this will be something really good for everybody to, to, to talk about. So um, 
um, probably the best thing I've been involved in in the last nine months. So um, just this meeting here. So um, um, there we go. Anything else we need to discuss tonight? We should all go out for drinks virtually. No, I'm kidding. Oh, <laughs> Well, I do want to tell you that you normally meet the third Monday, and next month um, we have city commission meetings on the first and third Monday. So that's gonna we'll have to figure out a meeting date for you. Cool. We'll look to you for that communication. All right. Has this been good for you, Carol? Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, this, this was fine. I think the idea is with the webinars that I'm going to be trying to train people to uh, facilitate on their own. But, um, it, you know, depending on the uh, number of meetings that you guys will have, uh, you know, I can talk to Paul about that and see what he wants to do. Um, but uh, yeah, this one, this was not bad, obviously, because it wasn't long. <laughs> and one is, is a lot different than my usual weeks where I have, well, you know, most weeks I have four meetings minimum, so. <laughs> we can't thank you enough for helping us here, yeah, Carol. And, no um, and then uh, in terms of frequency, we normally only have one major meeting like this. Other things, I'm sure we could all figure out how to, find our own Zoom call for our subcommittee or something, but um, um, there's only one official meeting a month um, for us, so. Um, right, but that's um, like every other group. So um, it's just a matter of sometimes juggling our schedules, but I'll look at it, like I said, it's just about the city commission because of the holidays moved from second, fourth to first, third, and you guys are usually the third Monday. So maybe you'll have to be the second Monday in December. No worries. I will get in touch with you as soon as I uh, map up the December meetings. Beautiful. And we're going to give away some money. That's going to be great. Look at that. We can all smile tonight when we go to bed because we're going to create something amazing. Um, I think that's better than putting a deposit on a sculpture right now. It, would you agree? Oh, yeah. This is much better. Cool. People are going to be um, so happy. Um, it just gives somebody a reason to continue with their art right now. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. um, I think that's kind of fun. I would entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. I'll make a motion. <laughs> motion by Laura to adjourn. Is there support? Support from Pat? All in favor? I'll have to do a roll call. Laura. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jody. Yes. Denise. Yes. Pat. Yeah. Melissa. And Carol, <laughs> we'll give you a vote. <laughs> Thank you, Carol, for helping us tonight. Um, Yay. Thanks, Carol. Round of applause for Carol. Woo! Woo! Oh, that's so kind. And thanks, everybody. We're making Thank stuff Thanks, happen. Jason. Yep. Good, to Good see seeing you. everyone. Yeah. See you guys. Take Bye. care. Well, Bye. Bye.